All right, friends and neighbors, time now for another networking video. This time we're going to talk about one aspect of DHCP. We're going to talk about failover and redundancy. But along the way, we're going to do some tips and tricks and maybe how to get things done and how to look at things while you're in a virtualized environment and trying to capture packets. So the things that I want to go over for this video are some of the things we're, uh, we're going to add to dhcpd.conf. Uh, we're going to talk just a little bit more about how to maybe get a better view at, to what uh, config test is doing. And then uh, we need to talk about the network editor and VM nets because that's where we're going to do our capturing. That's also where a competing DHCP server lives. And then we'll, you know, we'll talk about a couple of ways to refresh what a Linux client is doing. You know, on Windows we do the IP config release renew, and we want to be able to do the same sorts of things on on Linux. And then we'll do an example of TCP dump uh, versus Wireshark, and maybe we'll talk about the DHCP leases file if we, uh, if I remember to do that. And then of course we've got to have communication between the servers and the firewall rules. So the issue here, as we can see at the top of the screen, is that initially when we have a DHCP server it's not talking to anybody but when we want to do backups or failover load balancing redundancy then we're gonna have a couple of servers out there and a really important idea is that the two servers are talking to each other because they need to know what's going on with the leases and if you forget to do your firewall rules then you get what we see here at the top of the screen now port 647 hint hint wink wink that's gonna be the port that we're gonna to use to communicate and this is an attempt at the two servers to swap information or at least to sync up with each other and this is just prior to my instantiating a firewall rule that would allow that communication so that's an important thing to remember too so the RFC in question here is 3074 and 3074 has all the details and the nitty-gritty on how the DHC load balancing is supposed to work that's not a typo that's the the name of the RFC uh, so when we talk about you know two servers working together a lot of times we refer to things like oh uh, well it's gonna fail over one's gonna be the primary and secondary and the secondary is gonna pick up when the fail over when the primary dies that's not what we're talking about here it's actually a combination of those two things so there's gonna be a load balancing algorithm that goes on and we'll see that there's an actual hash function that determines whether or not the secondary or the primary is gonna provide a lease and of course if one of the servers goes down then the other server will will pick up the slack so as we can see here because DHCP clients use UDP broadcast to contact DHCP servers the discover can be answered by anybody and so what we want to make sure of is that the right server answer that even if they're using the same addressing space for the scope so as far as the load balancing goes the key idea is that we're going to do a hash on the transaction ID and as you know the transaction ID is what keeps DHCP messages together so more than one server is active at the same time on the same network now we're gonna see I'm gonna do a little bit of isolation just to make sure that we know which server is active and I'll show you that here in a little bit uh, but you can do the exact same address space and the hash function is what uh, what determines that and maybe maybe we'll do that too now here is you know probably one of the the central ideas here that requires the communication and also the timing between the two servers so you've got two servers active on the same subnet we know that normally one DHCP server should be out there on a particular subnet if we're not doing relay but now what we're saying is oh well we can have more than one server out there so if that was the case how would they interact well, we know we now that we've got this hash function on the transaction ID. Okay, so that gets us to how they don't fight with each other. But how do we keep track of what's going on? Because in the case of a server going down, the other one wants to pick up the slack. And so what the servers are doing is not only communicating with each other to let each other know, hey, I'm still around, but also what leases have been active and when they were supposed to expire. So servers are supposed to know the active leases for the other server as well, but also whether or not it's time for them to step in and take care of clients that they wouldn't normally have served based on the hash of the transaction. And so the idea here is that they're, act they're um, operating in the same address space 
and that we've got to replicate the data between the two. All right, now another important um, resource for you is not just the, the RFC 3074, but also the man page. Read your man pages, read the docs. So the failover protocol allows two DHCP servers to share a common address pool. Okay, so if one server fails, the other will continue to renew leases out of that pool. But how does it know that? How does it know what it's supposed to do? And the answer is that they're talking to each other. There's a communication between the two. So what we're going to do in the DHCPD.conf is we're going to create a declaration for uh, the failover peer. So we're going to say, listen, I'm the primary, you're the secondary, here's the pool that we're talking about, and here are the parameters that govern the operation of this pool. So for the demo that I'm going to do, here is the information that we've got down here. I've got three uh, VMs running, and initially we're going to start with just our primary DHCP server, but then I'm going to bring up a backup DHCP server and these are going to be the two server IP addresses 172.31.0.1 and 0 0.2 and the pools that we're going to talk about here are going to be 10 through 19, 20 through 29 and 30 through 39 and if it's not getting too long then I'll combine them but the on the 10 to uh, the uh, the 10 to 19 that's just to show us how we're starting by by default so let's do that right now Okay, so this is my primary DHCP server, and you can see that I've been futzing around with it, so I've just started up my, my DHCP server. Now, one of the things that I wanted to show you is also the DHCPD.config test. Config test. Okay, so we can see that I'm not getting any errors here, but I'm also getting this not configured to listen on any interfaces. But if I aim this at an interface, then what it does is it checks the interface and the configuration and then we can see that oh wait you are listening on a particular interface so this is the addition that you want to do to uh, to config if you want to you know if you want to fully test whether or not you're associated with a particular interface okay now let's also take a look at uh, the config file that I'm operating with right now and we can see that I've got some, it's really basic stuff, right? I've got a name server in here, some lease time uh, details. And then here is the range of addresses that I'm talking about, including the router and, and DNS is named, uh, yeah, we did a name server up there. Okay, so this is you know sort of what you would expect in a basic DHCPD.conf. Um, I don't have any reservations based on hardware address here, just, just a really sort of a bare bones sort of thing. And we can see up here that I'm on my primary DHCP server. I've also shut down the uh, the backup DHCP server right now. So there's just one DHCP server out there, and then I've got my client sitting right here. Now, how did I install the software on this when I'm running VMs? Okay, when you are setting up your VMs, a lot of times we'll change the network adapter and I'll go bridge so I'm sharing it with the host that I'm sitting on and then I'll get a DHCP address based on the network that I'm sitting on and that allows me to do my yum installs and everything else now I can stay on NAT here but what I've also done with my hypervisor is that I have adopted the approach that says well look when I want to use NAT I'm gonna kill off the hypervisor DHCP server. Why? Because I'm building my own DHCP server. So if I was going to try and do that uh, and stay on NAT, uh, then I would have had to manually configure all of the, the parameters, make sure my routing, my, my DNS was okay for the, for the clients, so that I could get out there and do the yum install for all my packages, in this case DHCP server. What happens is I go on bridged, install everything, then I go back over to NAT. Now the other thing that we want to remember here is that on my configuration, NAT is on VMNet 8. And so if I capture on VMNet 8, theoretically, I'll capture all the traffic that lives there for everybody. In addition, um, I can also do some stuff in between VMs, and we'll see how that works here in a second. Okay. so. Um, I'll show you my IP address here, and we can see that I am 172.31.0.17. But what I'm also going to do, let's go over to another terminal, and I'm going to show you a TCP dump command. Now, 
This TCP dump command is going to say, well, I want to capture on this interface. Remember that I'm on the client right now. And what I want to do is capture the exchange between the client and the server. So this is just one way to do this. And so in this particular command, I'm going to say capture on this interface. I'm going to add a little verbosity. I want to add some extra headers here. And I'm interested in port 67 and 68. And on top of that, I'm going to redirect it to a file called capture2. And so we're going to run that. And so I'm listening for those particular things. Because I'm redirecting it to a file, I don't get all of the output that TCP dump would normally drop on me. All right, so let's go back over here. And what I'm going to do is, let's see, we're going to, we're going to do DHCP or DH client dash R. Now, hopefully what that's doing is releasing the IP address from uh, my client and telling the server that I'm doing that. We'll take a peek here in a second. Now, the other way that I could have done that is I could say if down uh, ENS 33. I could do that. Now it's important to remember here that I'm also logged in as root and if I, if I was a client I would have to SU but this will be another way another way to do it. Okay now I'm going to use just DH client and let's go well let's go ahead and refresh our IP address and we'll see what we pull from the server and we'll, uh, we'll use if config this time and we've got you know, 131 set, uh, 172 17. Okay, so let's go back over and we'll stop this. And let's take a look at our file. All right. Now we can see that, um, well, let's, let's take a look. Here is, this is from 172 17 to the server and we can see that we're identifying my primary DHCP server here so this is a unicast message between them and this appears to be um, a DHCP conversation now if we go down whoops we go down a little bit here uh oh I may have gone too far uh, maybe I'll open it up in, in VI here yeah, I may have gone a little too may have gotten a little too uh, too happy. Um, I'll just say this that initially right now what we'll go with is that um, these this additional detail and what's going on in the headers here, right all of this stuff, this was added because I changed the verbosity of my of my uh, my capture. So what I'm going to do now is we'll do a VI on the capture. Okay, so this gives me a little bit better navigation. All right, so um, let's see. So we can see right here in this line that this is actually a release, right? Right here, we can see that it is a release message. So that was the DH client dash R. And then if we scroll down a little bit, what we're expecting to see is the Dora process begin when I go back into um, when I go back into the DH client command and I just run it again because again we want an IP address so we can see we've got several uh, messages here this is from you know, let's see we got a reply let's see we get to Dora all right here we go so here is a discover right now because this client had an IP address before here is so right in here right we've got the discover message and in addition to um, the a, a discover what we're seeing here is that the client knows what IP address it had before so this is a little different than I just started up and I am beginning my conversation again this is I was here before and I want the same IP address and so there's our discover here comes our offer, right? And we can see, you know, some of the details about what our, you know, what the offer is going to be. And here is uh, the request, right? So D O R, and we're requesting the IP address of 17. And then, let's see. Now we're given another offer. Eventually, we wind up with the, our acknowledgement from the uh, the server. 
Okay, so that is one way to do this. This is on an interface between two VMs talking directly to each other. Okay.